Good morning, folks. PMTS 2017 Precision Machining Technology Show. Let's go see what we can find. Yeah, really good. So guys, Brian Rowe with Mitsubishi. This is the guy who hooked us up with the ASX 445. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, so these are the, this is like a super popular base mill that does such a good job on on finishes for us in the non-ferrous and the aluminum. We absolutely love it. And it's fun because too, like those inserts, they last forever. So we run the two and a half inch five flute or five insert at 2,000 service feet a minute all day long. It's awesome. Brian was talking about tooling to machine up to 70 Rockwell. That is bonkers to me. I mean, 60 Rockwell is hard. Is hard. Is really hard. Crazy. Different, different coating technologies. And so you're doing a hard, hard milling speeds and feeds there, or what? Yeah. Do you yeah. guys help with the speeds and feeds on those applications? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, and and Slumba <laughs> Hitachi speed and feeds. It's still really crazy. You still might be a 20 thou depth of cut. Still run two, three hundred inches a minute. If I got a piece that's 60 or 70 Rockwell, do you think with one of those tools, do you think my VM3 could do it? Yes. Luke, we got to try that. I think so. That's awesome. I think we can do it. And then, it. folks, Wednesday widget on window machining. Take a look. How would you otherwise machine lights? This is so cool to me. Looks like you know, obviously a medical implant tooth. Uh, and then obviously some work to do removing the rest, but really cool. How's it going? It's going today. John Saunders. Hey, nice to meet you. Good to meet you. I'm John. Hi, Courtney. Nice Good to meet you. And they've got this new flex drill, sort of a CNC. It's interesting. It's a very different value proposition. Um, kind of an open style. You know, more like I think of it more as like a fabrication shop tool you know huge x-axis work area um are the ones i've seen have a little bit less y than this picture here exactly right right so like look, there's an r what's an r in piece so an o is optical infrared so okay. you've got like a glass lens yeah it talks awesome. via an infrared signal mm -hmm. to the infrared receiver yep r means it's radio so there's the radio receiver, no glass lens, just status light. No line of sight needed. No line of sight. Awesome. So if I got like a trunnion table, sure, sure. And all of a sudden I've got a piece of steel between here and my mm -hmm. receiver. Infrared probe comes up, and depending on how the OEM wires things up, comes up and says uh, path obstructed alarm typically. Radio doesn't have that. And then the probes here, you see with the gold bands, those are the high accuracy probes. Yeah. Instead of just relying on the three point kinematic switch, you've actually got a series of string gauges. Oh in. really? So while the 40 has repeatability of a couple of microns. Yep. That's got a repeatability of a quarter of a micron. Not to be confused, we have a different Haas. Take a look. It is beautiful. Five axis simultaneous grinding. You're grinding an insert. Correct. Solid carbide. carbide. Solid carbide. Yep. Very cool. Insert. Very cool. With a diamond wheel? We are. Metal bond, diamond wheel. Okay. What's the uh, other axis or wheel here that, for? That's a dressing spindle. Oh, dressing spindle. Maintain the profile on grinding wheel. Got it. Okay. Very cool. And when we saw it dip down, it's doing tool changes sort of from underneath the platen. Correct. Interesting. In this machine, we store wheels under the sheet metal yep. around the rotary table. Yep. It's With a cool. wheel changer, we're able to combine multiple operations into one clamp. Right. Sure. A variety, variety of shapes and sizes of wheels. It kind of reminds me when we were at AB Tool watching the Anka grinders and how they're able to just do multiple heads and multiple profiles. Really, really cool. Obviously maintaining better accuracy with, with one work holding. And take So these are all things that were made off of your grinders? Right. Amazing. Look at the size of that. We do a wide variety. <laughs> these are still small parts. We do some, some parts that are 18 oh inch gosh. diameter and four feet long. Holy cow, in, in larger, machines. larger machines. Yeah, right. Wow. And then you, these machines can also grind traditional solid carbide. 
profile tools and custom tools and so forth. Correct. Oh, you you grind strong, in medical as well? Yeah, got we it. have a very strong position in the particularly the knee oh, implant market. One of the implants is in. Is it J and J? And is there's a big implant. Warsaw, yeah. In, Warsaw yeah, right. is the center of the orthopedic universe. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Okay, got it. I was like, that sounded there. So that's funny. Okay, got it. Very cool. This is amazing. The same machine here on the video feed was grinding, then machining, then it has, and this is all run, driven off of using HSK80. HSK so pretty, pretty large um, spindle bearing has a effectively a belt grinder attachment that it's able to come through and do very, you know, programmed. Amazing. So you're doing that for tolerancing or surface, surfacing? Surface surfacing finish. Yeah. yeah. And again, we don't get the final finish with this belt. Yeah. We're doing more work in this machine, so there's mm -hmm. less work in the downstream Got operations. It. Yeah, sure, sure. And all in one setup. Yeah. Um, are you is are you normally running this under an oil bath, or is yes. this yeah, it's yeah. off for video? For the video, we have the coolant turned right. off. Right. Very cool. Yeah. Never seen a, a a belt grinder and a tool changer yeah. before. That's uh, that's a new one. I like that. So if you've ever had a total knee done uh, out there, there's a good chance that at one point the thing in your in your patella went uh, went through one of these at one point, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Cool. Thanks for showing us around. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very nice to meet you. I'm John. Hey, R.J. Reed. Good to meet you. That's it. So this is a smaller version compared to the 330. This is a linear motor machine. Oh, no kidding. So it's much faster. Yeah, sure. So awesome. Look at the rapid. Right. Look at that. 3500. 3, Inch permanent rapids. Holy cow. And this machine is outfitted with a 46,000 RPM tool. It's a finishing machine. <laughs> HSK? Uh, you can get it in HSK. What's this? This is actually BT30. Really? Yes, sir. Huh. I've never heard of that high RPMs in a... Interesting. I it's a unique machine. A lot of... Uh... Here, I can actually give you a part for the video. This is what we're machining in here. We're air cutting today, but that's the part that we sure. made. Yep. What's the material? 55 Rockwell, wow, so it's a sort of hard milling application. Very cool. Wow. Wow. Yeah, this is a bit of a unique machine, but, you know, we obviously, you said somebody has an MX330 that you know? Uh, the folks at Autodesk in Pier, uh, Pier 9 in, okay. in San Francisco. Okay. Yeah, they've got, I think, the first 330 that hit the U.S. There's only a few out there so yeah. far. They love it. But um, we are taking orders constantly. And now linear motors on... All axes? No, it couldn't be on the rotary. X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And then direct right. drive motors are Yeah. This is, uh, I don't know if you saw the loading station. Oh, really? So Offline? Okay. Uh, right. APC right there. This machine can be outfitted with up to 92 pallets. And it only comes out about this far. It's wow. right along the edge here. Yeah. We can put you up to 328 tools. <laughs> That's awesome. So, you can run independently, lights out, right. uninterrupted. Okay, so let's get the lockdown on this guy, which is the first time I've ever seen a Swiss lathe with a turret. This is a Star brand. Star brand, yep. yeah, but the turret's not unique. Uh, we have, uh, I mean, competitors have turrets Okay. Well, so it's got a turret and a slide. Yep. So you can do turning, you can do in working, you can do back working. Yep. Every other position has a B axis available on it. Now you've got to buy the tool holder yep. that has the B, but Right, uh, but there is a gearing mechanism yes. through that that runs your live tooling. Yeah, up. full B axis so you can get your angles. Yep. This sub spindle is a two axis sub, so it moves in, in C yeah. and in oh, X. Oh, interesting. Yeah. No, oh, okay. So Why are we moving in X? Limitless uh, possibilities. Wow. Because I have back working here. Oh, so you can do a transfer to the sub, move oh, over, yeah. and yeah. work off of that guy. So this sub picks off from the main. Got it. I, I see. I can be turning my next part. And doing backwards. Oh, simultaneous. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> that's the beauty of this is a lot of overlapping opportunities. So right. you're getting free time, so your right. cycle time's going down. And the really cool thing here, folks, a lot of the mojo, it comes in the fact that your um, your workpiece right there has a very special bushing that supports it along the, the circumference of the part. So you can turn, think about like a baseball bat, because you're always going to be cutting near the headstock. So as you push that thing out, you've got support right where you're doing the cutting. Now the downside is you can't move that part back in then because you no longer have contact with the bushing. But so parts that you can make out these things that it would be very difficult to make elsewhere. Yep, because of the deflection. Yeah, exactly. Which makes it really cool. So it's a beautiful thing. Wow.
Uh, so just walking around and a guy came up to me. You want to introduce yourself? Uh, Jason Hudkins. Jason. So awesome story. Like the guy who's done it all, run automotive machining, certain, you know, that softened up, started a bow company. He's on, like, like just uh, entrepreneur. Jason, yeah, just, just whatever, I, you know, I'll make uh, baby rattles if I can sell them. <laughs> yeah, right. No, it's awesome. And so he'd actually emailed because they do an auto top off system and they were looking for Arduino stuff. So you want to show us what you got? Okay. What we came up with was we, you know, obviously you see these videos of these nightmares that every shop has seen. You okay. Know, you know, cool. What happens is a guy goes to Philly's tank. Somebody says, Hey, uh, come here and look at this picture or whatever. Or phone rings. Guy walks away and realizes he forgot to shut the ball valve off and he floods everything. Yeah. So, up with was put it around. It's like right now I got a set for uh, a set for two gallons or a gallon and a half. It'll go run and it just shuts off. It shuts off. So cool. like at our shop we set it for four and a half gallons. Uh, Measure it. Yeah, it, just, yeah. it runs out to four and a half gallons and it shuts off. 